Good morning, and welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church on this, our second Sunday after the Epiphany. We're glad to have you worshiping with us today. If you're visiting with us online this morning, we just want to say a special welcome to you, and that we're glad to have you worshiping with us today. I'd love it if you would just leave a comment in the comment section letting us know of your uh, visiting our service today, and we can reach out to you and let you know more about our life here at St. John's and how to make you feel uh, especially welcome. Um, a couple of announcements for us. One is this morning's service bulletin was posted just a few minutes prior to this video going live. So if you go to our Facebook page and scroll through, you'll find uh, the 1030 worship bulletin uh, posted there. You can click on that link and everything for the service will be printed there for you. In addition to that, we also have another post that has a link to our online giving platform, Tithely. And we invite you, uh, if you are so moved to offer, uh, give your offering to the church, either for our Tidely platform, or you can mail your check uh, to the church as well. We just wanted to make sure make you aware of that opportunity as well. And for my last announcement this morning, I want to let you know that today, uh, this Sunday, or this coming week, is the week of Christian unity for the World Council of Churches. So churches all around the world are recognizing that this is a week of Christian unity. And tomorrow being Martin Luther King Jr. Day, uh, the churches here in Waynesboro got together and are putting on a virtual service for us tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. Uh, where we, uh, St. John's, Brian and I are a part of that service uh, as well. And so we just invite you to join us at 7 p.m. Uh, tomorrow. It's going to be through Grace Lutheran's uh, page. They're going to be the ones hosting uh, the video tomorrow uh, to join and follow along. You should have gotten an email uh, at the end of last week from me with information on how to find that service. Uh, if you have questions about that or how to log in and, and access it, just reach out to me uh, this weekend and I'll be glad to help fill you in on how to, how to do that. But just know that's tomorrow at 7 p.m. We invite any and all uh, to join with us in that prayer service for unity. We now continue with our service with the hymn 477. All praise to thee, for thou, O King divine. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, 
Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's first lesson comes to us from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am, not, that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by a sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, and then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything, and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in Psalm number 139, read responsibly by half her. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places. And are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips. But you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me 
behind and before me, then lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you. While I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. Today's second lesson comes to us from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God has raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, 
according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Daniel said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The season of Epiphany is a season in which we focus on the revealing or the revelation of God in the world. This morning we hear in our Old Testament lesson from 1 Samuel the story of Samuel as a young boy. And he hears the voice of God. And in that story, the prophet Eli was losing his sight, we hear. And yet we understand that Samuel was able to be perceiving God there in that moment. And even Eli shared with Samuel that this must be the Lord. So listen and pay attention. I'd like us, though, today to focus on the revealing and epiphany moment that takes place in John's Gospel today. We hear the story of the calling of Philip and of Nathaniel to come and follow Jesus on the way. But let's begin with Philip. Philip's story seems a bit straightforward and, and pretty direct. Jesus finds Philip and calls him and says to come and follow me. Philip's immediate response was to then go and gather Nathaniel and tell him and bring him along as well. Philip shows what seems to be a simple and a direct faith. He's found by Jesus and he's willing to go and even bring his friends along. Philip has a moment of faith and of epiphany that we can look to. But there's also Nathaniel. And Nathaniel's story may be a little bit closer akin to my story even, maybe yours, I don't know. But we hear in Nathaniel a little bit of resistance. In Nathaniel's story, Philip comes to him and says, we have found Jesus, the Christ, we have found the Messiah. Come and see. Nathaniel has some hesitancy and he says, how can anything good come from Nazareth? And that struck me. There were some intrinsic walls and barriers for Nathaniel in finding faith in Jesus. Nathaniel hadn't yet even seen Jesus, but yet he already seemed to have a foreknowledge of him just because he knew he was from Nazareth. A Nazarene, how can anything good come from Nazareth? He has some assumptions some prejudice that he already demonstrates that are putting up this barrier to his faith. I remember growing up in Southeast Ohio and there was uh, just kind of this assumption that was going on and I only lived there till I was about nine and a half years old. But by the time I moved away, I remember kind of in our childhood jargon and way of thinking and speaking, we had a prejudice against people across the river from West Virginia. Similar to Nathaniel, I would have probably said something like, well, who could have come from West Virginia? That would have been good. And like Nathaniel, 
There was some work that had to be done inside of me to break that wall down and to break that barrier down. I'm fortunate to be able to call my best friend today is someone who is from West Virginia. I'm very fortunate for his friendship. But I'd like to get back to Nathaniel and how to break that wall down or how that wall was able to be broken down for him. When we heard Philip's story, it was very quick, very efficient. His faith instantly grasped hold of Jesus. For Philip, he was already in a posture of being open to being found by Jesus. In fact, that was the verb used. It's that Jesus found Philip. Well, Philip was willing to be found. Nathaniel was seen by Jesus. We hear when Jesus talks to him, I saw you under the fig tree with Philip. For Nathaniel, his heart became softened, and that wall came crumbling down once he realized that he was seen first. He was known by Jesus. Jesus was willing to seek him out, to find him, and to see him. I think often in our lives, we have our walls put up. We have these boundaries and barriers put up because we have a suspicion of the other. We have a suspicion that we already know something about this other person or these other groups of people. But it's in that moment of vulnerability, that moment in which Nathaniel is seen that he finally has the scales fall from his eyes. As he is seen, he can then see Christ in return. We heard it in Psalm 139 today, one of the most beautiful psalms, in which God has known us even before our birth as we are being knitted in our mother's womb. There is a deep abiding sense of love when we feel that we are known and seen for who we are on the inside. As Nathaniel's eyes are open to Jesus, as he realizes that he has been seen first, that he has been known, the walls come down. He looks to Jesus as rabbi, as teacher, not only has Jesus gone from being a Nazarene, someone from Nazareth, who would never wise be approached, he's now becoming the rabbi to Nathaniel. He's willing to learn and to grow and to follow Jesus. Our world is palpably divided right now. Across the country, across the world, there are so many things that we can set up as walls and barriers to knowing and being known by one another. I wonder today, if Jesus were to approach us, what might he say? How might he see us? Are we able, like Philip, to be received and to be seen and welcomed and to be found? Do we know that we're lost, needing to be found? Or maybe we're like Nathaniel, and something needs to soften our heart first. An acknowledgement that God, in fact, does see us, does know us, warts and all. And as he does, even still, he invites us to follow him. As we are seen by God and by Christ, it affirms that we are indeed good and made for goodness. God calls us to follow him in Christ, to be about reconciliation, to be about seeing others, about opening ourselves up to be seen and known. May we have the faith and the courage to follow in the examples of those given to us in Scripture. Again, I'm so grateful. My best friend is from West Virginia. But even more so, I've been redeemed by God 
who has come to know me and my life and my experience as a human in flesh and in bone, and loves me all the more for that. Amen. I invite you to join with me as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now continue with the prayers of the people. I ask for prayers for God's people throughout the world. For our bishops, remembering especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark and Keith, our bishops, Benjamin, our rector, Brian, our deacon. We also pray for the Right Reverend Nicholas Baines in the Diocese of Leeds, the Episcopal Church of Sudan, and St. Mark's School in Circle of Suez, Haiti. We pray for our friend and mission, the Right Reverend Patrick Augustine, Assistant Bishop of the Diocese of Gore, and the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. We pray for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask for prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask for prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask for prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for all the healthcare workers and essential employees in our community and around the world. Remembering especially Joel, Elaine, Matt, Emily, Kathy, Greg, Michael, Melinda, and Julia. 
We also pray for all teachers and school employees, remembering especially Bethany, Susan, Doris, Elizabeth, Dale, Kathy, Susan, Alex, Michael, Amanda, John, Anthony, Edmund, Brency, Melissa, and Pam. We pray for those on our parish family's prayer list. John K., Janelle, Peter, Joseph, Ted and family, the Schreiber family, Helen, Dorothy, Chris, Warren, Emily, Rex, Frank, Jim, Teresa, Liana, Carl, Stacy, the Navajo Nation, and the children and youth of our community. We pray for the safety of our armed forces at home and abroad, remembering especially Dominic, Steele, Ryan, Tim, Matthew, Carson, Nathaniel, Richard, Nathan, Jeff, Jason, Ryan, Jake, Brendan, Kyle, and Matt. We thank God for those celebrating birthdays this week, remembering especially Janet and Jim B. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom. And grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son and his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. <clears throat> My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please bring one another in the peace of Christ there in your home. And as we share the peace of Christ, we now pray as he has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Depart in peace. Remember the poor. Pray for the sick and love one another. May God, through the Holy Spirit, be within us to refresh us, around us to protect us, before us to guide us, above us to bless us, and beneath us to hold us up. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 